You're watching WCSD from Callaway County High School. Good afternoon, Lakers. Promise tomorrow. Are you ready? They better be, or they're in for a rough night. You got that right. Well, we'll come back to that later. It was another great performance by the Laker academic team members. Last weekend, they traveled to Washington, D.C. to compete in the National Science Bowl, hosted by the U.S. Department of Energy. Callaway's team competed against 67 other high schools, and it's worth noting that they were mostly math and science magnet schools, not your typical public high schools. However, the Lakers held their own to finish 7-1 in the round-robin play and clinched a spot in the Smart 16 in the nation. They lost their elimination matches to magnet schools Thomas Jefferson High School of Science and Technology and North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics. Well, Lakers, Callaway County's 2014 Senior Prom is this weekend. In fact, it's tomorrow. And the Senior Prom Committee has been working hard this week to make sure that this year's prom will be a night to remember. But don't forget, you will have to have some sort of identification to get through the prom doors. Otherwise, they will not allow you in. Here's Ms. Loveless and Ms. Middlebrooks to tell you more about the event. Prom will be Saturday, May 3rd, and the Grand March starts at 8 o'clock. We ask that the seniors be here by 7.15 for a lineup. Usually we'll typically have lineup back in the main hallway, um, and they'll line up, and there'll be teachers there, volunteers help every year to get them in line. We'll have a list of, okay, you go in front of this person, you go in front of this person, um, and parents will be out in the general seating area on the bleachers. Parents need to be here no later than 8 o'clock. The doors will open at 6 o'clock and it does get very crowded. So if you know of somebody who has a special need or needs to sit in a specific place, please make sure that you get here early so that you can have the seat that you would like to have. Um, like I said, doors open at 6, but the Grand March doesn't start until 8. Um, also come on time. Make sure that you're here no later than 7.30. We ask that you be here by 7.15, but no later than 7.30, and come to have fun. I think it's gonna be really good. I think the kids that have decorated for it and the kids that are working on it, kids seem really excited. I think they're putting a lot of effort into it to make it good, so I think they're gonna really enjoy it. I'm really proud of the work so far. This is just day two, but I'm really proud of the work that the prom committee's done so far. This class is really hardworking, and I really appreciate all of their efforts so far. The prom kicks off with the Grand March. It's a promenade of all the guys and gals so everyone can see how great they look. What you're looking at here is some footage from last year's prom here at Callaway. Now, if this is not your first, time to, first prom to attend, you already sort of know how Grand March works. But since some of you may have no, not have any idea about what you're supposed to do, the prom committee felt like a little training video might be helpful today. So up next, a little segment we like to call Grand March for Dummies. Okay guys, I'm Caleb Brandon, and I'm here with Grand March for Dummies. Saturday night, we're all lining up. The guys are going to be lining up on the left side behind this partition, and the girls are going to be lining up, lining up on the right side. When the guy's name is called, they'll walk around and walk out. Then the ladies will, will wait here until they hear their name called, and then they'll walk out. Okay, when the guys come out, they're going to come out through the Hollywood star and stand in front of the star and wait for their date. And then when the ladies are announced, they're going to come out and meet up with their date, put their arm through, their, through the guy's arm, and walk out in a nice casual pace, shoulders straight. And then they're gonna walk out and get out to the edge, to the middle of the checkerboard walk. Stand there for three seconds so your mom can have a Kodak moment, get a nice picture, and then you're gonna turn to the right and walk down the edge of the checkerboard. And that, is, is Grand March for Dummies. By the way, the Grand March begins at 8, and if any of you are interested in seeing the pageantry of it all, it is open to the public. However, if you want a good seat, you better get here early. A while back, one of Scott's civil science classes took part in a lab where they learned about heat and energy transfer. Broadcast One reporter Alyssa Bodeway thought this lab would leave a nice taste in the students' mouths. 
Students in Mr. Scott Civil's integrated science class recently participated in an experiment in which they studied temperature changes by making ice cream. Well, the chapter we're currently studying is about heat and energy transfer, and this relates to the heat transferring from the ice to the milk and the sugar. How heat transfer is used with physical changes, and uh, also uh, we just felt like you know ice cream is something that all kids like to have, so we did that. I've done this experiment over the past probably 10 or 15 years. Well, considering I like food, I liked eating the ice cream. I like ice cream. I liked making the ice cream. Kids always love it, so uh, I thought it was a good idea just to do it, you know, right here uh, you know, at the end of school. And, and so we try to do a lot of hands-on stuff so that the kids can be a part of, and it's always a fun activity. For Like Your TV, I'm Alyssa Bodeway. We all have our ups and downs, but some teams feel d down all the time. Coming up next on Focal Point, a look at teen depression. And later on, Coach Brad Lawson joins us on the set to talk about a night of champions. I can't believe we're at prom. Yeah, it's awesome. Even Kenny's here. Keep those exciting moments from prom and graduation with you always by purchasing a professional quality DVD set from Callaway Live. Pre-order the Grand March 2014 DVD and the Class of 2014 Commencement DVD from any member of the Callaway Live Video Production Club. Or stop by Mr. Hernan's classroom, 401, and fill out an order form. You can get the complete two DVD set for only $25. Or order a single event DVD for $15. Order yours today and enjoy the video of those once-in-a-lifetime adventures again. Oh my god! They've killed Kenny! And again. Oh my god! They've killed Kenny! Depression. It affects everyone from time to time, yet it seems to affect teens the most. Over half of American teenagers experience chronic depression, but it's not only America with the problem, it's the entire world. On this week's Focal Point, Zach Kalava looks into the world of teen depression. Zach? There are as many misconceptions about teen depression as there are about teens in general. Occasional bad moods or acting out is to be expected, but depression is something very different. Depression can destroy the very essence of a teenager's personality, causing an overwhelming sense of sadness, despair, or anger. Whether these instances of teen depression are actually increasing or just becoming more aware of them, the fact remains that depression strikes teenagers far more often than most people think. Experts say that only one in five depressed teens receive help. Teenagers usually must rely on parents, teachers, or caregivers to recognize their suffering and to get them the treatment they need. So if you have an adolescent in your life, it's important to learn what teen depression looks like and what to do if you spot the warning signs. Here are just a few of those signs. And it seems that we all get blue from time to time. Uh, that's no big deal. It becomes a big deal when uh, there's some longevity to uh, the nature of our uh, blueness, if you will. And so we all feel it from time to time, but uh, Activity, friends, uh, usually can snap us out. But if it becomes a problem, then we need to seek help. Over 60% of teens experience some sort of depression in their lifetime. Girls are 20% more likely to experience depression. Uh, we are fine-tuned a little differently, and uh, it could have to do with those raging hormones that everyone talks about. Uh, it could have to do with our sensitive natures. It could have to do with the fact that we're more verbal about our feelings and guys hold in their feelings or the stereotypical guy does. Although, according to statistics, teen boys are five times more likely to commit suicide than teen girls. Yeah, we do seem to get those types of stats. Uh, girls perhaps talk out the matter, uh, seek help. Uh, guys may be a bit more action oriented or may have uh, simple access to uh, something that could be life-ending that a girl might not find readily accessible. Depression can not only be due to society, but from heredity as well. 
And many things are inherited. Uh, our chemical imbalances, uh, uh, the, the uh, nature of our chemicals, we, we do seem to see that some types of disorders are inherited. Some symptoms of teen depression could be sadness or hopelessness, irritability, anger or hostility, tearfulness or frequent crying, withdrawal from friends and family, loss of interest in activities, restlessness and agitation, feelings of worthlessness and guilt, lack of motivation, difficulty concentrating, thoughts of death or suicide, and even unexplained aches and pains. If you have a teen, please be on the lookout for any sort of signs or symptoms. If you suspect that a teenager in your life is suffering from depression, speak up right away. Your teen may be reluctant to open up. He or she may be ashamed, afraid of being misunderstood. Alternatively, depressed teens may simply have a hard time expressing what they're feeling. If your teen claims nothing is wrong, but has no explanation for what is causing them to be depressed, you should trust your instincts. Remember that denial is a strong emotion. Furthermore, teenagers may not believe that what they're experiencing is the result of depression. The most important thing to do is to let him or her know that you're there to listen to them and offer support. Now more than ever, your teenager needs to know that he or she is valued, accepted, and cared for. Here are some ways to get help for you and your teen. Uh, be a friend, first of all, and if it's more than a friend can handle, uh, seek an adult, seek a trusted adult. Uh, you might start with your family doctor. Uh, it's a good starting point. Uh, your school guidance counselor, they can make referrals. There is help out there. Uh, there, there is not anything that's too great uh, uh, to, to be remedied, perhaps, on, on this level. Uh, we, we, we can help. When it comes to teen depression, some think it's hard to cure. While it is difficult to cope with, it's also very easy to make things better. If you see someone down, or looking depressed, or look like you're just having a bad day, do not just sit there. Give them some words of encouragement. Remember, one of the number one ways to cope with depression is encouragement from others. Liger TV, I'm Zach Halava. Depression is a much bigger problem than people can imagine. If you see anyone who seems like they're suffering, lend a hand. The best thing for someone who is depressed could just be a good friend. Keep your head up, Lakers. Thank you, Zach, for that interesting focal point. Up next, we have sports with Jake Burnett. Here. Michael Adams. Here. <laughs> Michael Adams. Here! Michael Adams. Students who miss 18 days of school in any grade risk falling behind and not graduating. Absences add up. Keep track at boostattendance.org today. Last Saturday, the Lakeland Anglers went to Kentucky Bass Fishing State Tournament, with Nathan Camp and Brandon Falwell finishing third, and Jared Phillips and Nikki Proctor finishing fifth. Milligberg and Trigg Counties took first and second place, with only a single pound and three ounces separating the first and second place and only three pounds keeping the Callaway team from first. Senior track and field star Ashton Shelton signed the dotted line last Friday afternoon as she signed a letter of intent to join Murray State University's track and field team as a freshman in the fall. She was joined by friends, family, and head coach Dylan Sonnet, who says he just wanted her to relish the moment. Well, I'm really excited. I enjoy what I do and I get to now step up a level and compete with people who are a little bit better than me or better than me and try to get to a higher level. CCHS is in the market for a new boys basketball coach. Earlier this week, Bruce Lane announced that he was stepping down from his position as the Laker head coach after seven seasons. 
Coach Lane won two fourth district championships during that period and just missed the regional championship in 2013 when the Lakers lost to Graves County. Lane says his number one reason for stepping down was to spend more time with his family. We'd like to say thanks to Coach Lane for his hard work leading the Laker program. A few weeks ago, we reported that archery program was being developed here at CCHS. Today, reporter Colby Cobra provides an update about this club's sport that hopes to be competing with other schools next year. CCHS has many teams. Our newest addition is the archery team. And today, Laker TV is going to give you the inside look on what the archery team is all about. Well, I've never done archery before, but it sounded like it was going to be a good experience. And I've done bow hunting and deer hunting, and I thought it'd be good, so that's why I did it. What makes it fun for me is it takes skill and it's a challenge. Archery has recently been named an official sport by Kentucky High School Athletic Association. But according to the rules, the first year you bring a new sport to your school, it must be considered a club. So although it will be a club this season, next year CCHS Archery Team will be competing against schools in our area. You can look forward to watching our archers go head to head against schools such as Graves, McCracken, and Murray High. The CCHS archery team is gearing up for great things, so be on the lookout for them next season. And also, look out for any arrows if you're in the gym on a Tuesday or Thursday afternoon. For Laker TV, I'm Colby Culver. Well, if you're into collecting sports items, listen up. The Laker football team is busy preparing for a really big fundraising event to help get the full story. Here's Tyler Coveney standing by in Studio B with a live interview. It's called Night of Champions. It's a fundraising campaign sponsored by the CCHS football team and it features to big events next week. Today, joining me is head coach Brad Lawson. Coach, last year it was Duck Dynasty, this year Night of Champions. What is Night of Champions? Well, Night of Champions, it's an auction dinner. Uh, we have live auction, we have silent auctions, we have uh, radio TV auctions, and, and we have dinner. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a way for us to raise money for a football program. Um, we understand that there's a, a schedule laid out of there's going to be a TV, radio auction, be online auction, be live auction. Could you give us a schedule, a detail of this? Right, well, next Thursday, May the 8th, on Froggy uh, 103.7 in Murray State's um, channel, I think it's channel 11, uh, we're going to have a radio TV auction from 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, people can watch, TV, uh, watch, the, watch the channel, listen to the radio, call in. There will be a number on the screen they can call in bill on items. Uh, Saturday uh, from 4.30 to 7, we're having our dinner catered by Boulders. It's $50 uh, per ticket. Uh, at 7 o'clock, we're going to draw uh, six, six tickets. Uh, the first five uh, are going to win $100. That sixth one is going to win $2,500. So you get a $50 ticket, you can come eat a great meal from Boulders and have a chance to win uh, that, the grand prize. Then at 715, we'll have the live auction uh, in the gym. And we also have, uh, if you go to LakerNationFootball.com, you can go and, and see the schedule of events. You can also uh, get on our online auction that's going on right now, too. So we have about five or 600 items right now going on. Coach, I understand there's like a, a plethora of great items that buyers are really wanting, uh, great sports and, and uh, different signed autographed mm -hmm. items. Uh, could you give us a list of the most highlighted uh, objects? Uh, probably if you, if you say which one is the – it depends, I guess, on your taste. But you know, we have a signed uh, Peyton Manning Denver Bronco jersey. We have an Andrew Luck signed helmet. We have a Ray Lewis Super Bowl uh, signed football. Uh, we have a Jack Nicklaus signed uh, – flag from British Open. Uh, right in front of us we have, uh, you got a Alabama game helmet, you got a signed uh, national championship from University of Louisville from two years ago, signed by Coach Patino. You got Coach Matthew Mitchell from the head coach at, uh, at UK women's basketball. We got a Ted Williams, Mickey Mantle uh, autographs. We got, there's all kinds of stuff and not only autograph stuff, we also have hunting trips, we have fishing trips, we have some, some different types of just sports merchandise that's not signed. And we have ticket packages. We got a, we got a Daytona 500 uh, package. We got a U.S. Open Pinehurst uh, in North Carolina package. Uh, and there's all kinds of other trips and vacations that we have. Uh, sounds extraordinary, Coach. Um, in case any 
uh, CCHS football um, uh, faculty or, or students want to get in, in touch with you, how might they be able to do that to purchase tickets to find out more information? Right. Well, our players are selling tickets right now. They can find uh, a player or come see me uh, or call me here at school. You can email me at donald.lawson at callaway.kyschools.us. You know, all the phone number here at school. Uh, you know, 762-7374, uh, and they can just give me a, you know, give me a call uh, if, if they want to buy a ticket. And um, but and then also again, the, the the big informational, I guess, tool we have is our website at, at LakerNationFootball.com. Uh, we appreciate you being here today, Coach Lawson, and we uh, we wish the best success for you and your football team. Thank you for Laker TV. I'm Tyler Covington. Over the course of the school year, the Harbor Youth Center has accumulated items, so the Harbor has decided to have a yard sale recently to clean out the closet. Some of you even went to check it out and get a few free things. I mean, who doesn't like something that's free, right? The reporter Josh Bailey went out to check things out. The Callaway County Hall yard sale was held on March 29th, and I went out to see what it was all about as well as seeing what students and faculty have to say about it. Many agreed that this event was a great opportunity for students in need. It'd be great even if you're not in need <laughs> to get some cool clothes, but yeah, I think, I think it's great. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to see here? Uh, well, I really like coming here, uh, well, for my friends and to also learn uh, from some of the best teachers here. We did one like this several years ago. Um, Maurice's had donated a bunch of clothes that had been donated to them. So we haven't done it in several years, and I just always like to find something cool for the kids to be involved in, and nothing's any better than free stuff. So once we finish here, then we're going to load this up. We're going to take it to Angel's Attic. And then after, they will sell it then, you know, for not too much, but they will sell it. All of their profit goes to the Angel's Clinic. Uh, that helps everybody in the community. So all the items that are not given away here will go to Angel's Attic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard it first from many people here, including the lady who has started this and the students who have had their own personal opinions. For Laker TV, I'm Joshua Bailey. That was definitely something. Okay, well, let, let's move on. If you're still craving superheroism after seeing Captain America, then you're in luck. The new Spider-Man movie is currently in theaters. In this latest addition to the Amazing Spider-Man series, Peter Parker has not only one, but three villains after him for all different reasons. There, here's Will Van Horn, a Spidey fan himself, giving some insight. The next chapter of Mark Webb's Spider-Man is finally in theaters. Yeah, I mean, I think it looks pretty good. I'm probably going to go see it maybe Sunday or maybe even tomorrow night when it comes out. The other, what, four now? Those are all pretty good. Though what is really amazing about Spider-Man 2 is all of the classic enemies of Marvel's webhead. I think it makes the movie a little bit more exciting because I like all the action that they put into the movies and I, for a lot of the superhero movies, I think they go kind of quick with all the fight scenes. And I like having more conflict in the movie to make it more interesting. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is currently in theaters. Spider-Man. Thanks, Will. And remember, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is currently in theaters, just in time for you guys that aren't going to prom this weekend. But for those of you who are going to prom, one concern every year at prom time is the weather. After all that trouble getting up dressed up in formal wear, no one wants to make their grand entrance in the pouring rain. But no worries this year. The forecast for Saturday afternoon is sunny and 75. Well, that sounds great. We hope everyone enjoys the weekend, and we'll see you next Friday on Laker TV.